Jenny and Tim from DS Tech, and we're sharing with you IoT horror stories. And just wait a second, we'll tell you what IoT is. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter so you can get all the latest updates and any other nasty things that are going on out there, because I do put them in the newsletter every week. You get updates and tips on how to be really productive at your job, in your business, mm -hmm. as a boss, whatever. So, and at the end of this video, I will share how to get our free security assessment if you own a business. So, IOT, we like to use our acronyms in this business, but what does it mean? Um, well, generically, it just means Internet of Things. Um, think of all the different new devices you have that are connecting to the Internet now. You may have a you know, smart um, thermostat that can control your temperature of your house, and you think it's neat because now before you get home, you can turn your air conditioning on from an app in your phone before you get home, all that kind of stuff. Um, smart lights, um, all kinds of different sensors, anything that connects to the Internet that's not necessarily a straight computer, um, you know, like that different things like that. We call them IoT is kind of the umbrella term for that. So things that connect to the internet. Yep, pretty right? much, yep. Internet of things, that makes sense. And you can have a smart <laughs> toaster now that connects to the internet and does some sort of function or, you know, different things like that. So it all just depends what you, you have and it's connecting to the internet, so. You know, when we were, I got a sidebar, but when we went to Epcot, they had this smart home. They yep. called it the future home. Yep. And it was really cool though. I mean, you just walked in and they showed you all the things that, this smart home would do, like automated. Yeah, it's cool. Like you could walk into a room and the lights just turn on the second you walk into the room. You don't even need to flip the light switch anymore. And then the second you leave the room, it instantly will turn off the lights. So you no longer have to remember to turn the light switch off. Um, there's all kinds of things you can have automated HVAC. So you go into a room, all of a sudden you can have the air conditioner kick on. Um, it's anything you want to automate, you can. So like build futuristic movies where you had like the Bill Gates house where it's all smart and crazy, where you walk in the room and the TVs turn on and the lights turn on and all that fancy stuff. It's all possible now with current technology. It's actually happening. Yes. So that kind of gets kind of scary because I actually saw a horror movie <laughs> yeah. where the, um, I'm going to call it, it wasn't called the Internet of Things in the movie, but the in the movie, all of the things were controlled by this evil. <laughs> oh, like that old uh, movie, evil what was it? Trucks, remember the old truck yeah. story where the trucks came alive? And were, oh yeah, that was a Stephen and, King one. Yep, so it's kind of like that, which is the whole house came alive. And <laughs> right? Attacking. Okay. So that can kind of come true too. Yes, right? if your stuff's not secure. If your stuff is not secure. So we actually have some stories of things that have happened or can happen or in some cases where hackers just, you know, made it happen so that they could show the company that, look, I can hack your stuff. It's possible without yeah. actually exploiting it first. Yeah, yes. some of the stories are like that, but um, several of them actually happen. Yeah. So <laughs> the first thing, I guess, before we even get into all of this, um, you can do to prevent this is you always want to change your default settings on your devices. So a lot of times the problem now this happens is people will get their new rings, uh, doorbell or whatever it is, hook it up, connect it to their internet and it just works. And they're like, okay, it's done. I'm good to go. But the problem is they don't take the extra time to actually change the default settings, which like your password might oh. just be admin and then password. Yeah. So every device when it gets shipped has a generic password. And then, you know, if you don't change that, Hackers can basically do little pings all over the world and try to find these devices. And then if they try the default passwords in them, all of a sudden, oh, I got in on this one. And now from there, they're in your network. They can look at your stuff and kind of take over. Like and... the wireless devices that have the password written on the bottom? Yes. Those ones? Those ones are harder because the manufacturers did realize they were exploiting this. And so uh, now they started to ship out unique passwords with each device, but not all companies do that because it's extra time on the manufacturer to make a unique password with every device, ship it out. Um, it's just more time for them. So a lot of times they'll just be generic, be like it's yeah. admin, admin, and then through the setup, they'll tell you to change it, but most people don't. I do remember some of the routers that, that had admin password. Yes, it's and it's like... very generic. So. Um, so what they'll do is once they are able to get into your device, they might start using it for other purposes. They're not looking to say, hack your smart, um, thermometer so they can turn your temperature up and make you, you know, bake in the middle of the summer. But what they'll do is they'll rally up, say a thousand of these that they found in the wild. And then they'll point all of the devices, almost like a swarm of ants at a spe special target. 
and that's called like a botnet, where they're taking all these different little devices and using all the processing power of all of them together are targeting one location with them. And that's where kind of the big attack, the, the big one we've heard of here, um, I don't know how to exactly say this properly, but it's like Mirai, uh, M-I-R-A-I, Mirai. I don't know if it's Mir AI or if it's supposed to be one fluid word, but there was the big DDoS botnet, which they took down um, big companies like, you know, I think CNN. Reddit was down, CNN was down, um, Twitter. you know, Twitter was down. Mm -hmm. That was all done through a hacker basically exploited all these little devices and pointed them all at these servers so that there was just overloaded the system. It wasn't mm -hmm. actually looking to, you know, extract data, it was just looking to cause um, harm, I guess you could say. Could the people know that their devices were being used that way? Possibly. Um, it, really, a lot of times you don't even know it because your device is just sending little pings. It's such yeah. little data that it's not actually so going to do anything. So your device might not even, you might not even know your device is doing it because it's still up doing mm -hmm. its normal functions. It's still controlling your temperature and all that kind of stuff. Huh. Um, That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Another one that was kind of demonstrated was more for how the cars nowadays are becoming more and more technical, especially with, you know, like Tesla cars and all the EVs, that kind of stuff. But even just the, drive, the, the race, cars that drive themselves, exactly. basically. Um, and modern day cars all have kind of a form of that AI cruise control in uh -huh. them anyway. And the problem yeah. with all those different controlled components is the same thing if they're not secure, um, they can be exploited, taken over, and then, you know, things uh, have happened. So the, the so main the one, story? the Jeep story is the one where they kind of had like a closed test where in theory, it was like, well, we should be able to exploit your thing vehicle and take over things like make it so you can't even turn the steering wheel anymore. Um, you could have it to where they just turn the cruise control on and you can't turn it off or, you know, scary things, which could cause an accident and real life harm. They were able to not only be local to it, but send commands using a cell phone through, I think it was Verizon or one of them. Um, it was one of the main carriers. One of the main carriers yeah. through a cell phone network, they were able to basically exploit the firmware in this Jeep and send it to do certain commands, you know, such as, um, you know, braking, uh, the accelerating, steering, all that kind of stuff as well. And eventually they had to update their firmware to, you know, prevent that from happening. So just like your computers, there's constantly hackers trying to break in and then there are patches to prevent it. The same thing now is happening, not just with computers, oh, but with cars. Which with is why I have to update yes. the software in my car all the time. Exactly, because I mean, it's just like a computer. It does it automatically, but mm -hmm. still. Yes, that's so any anytime you have an update for your devices, whether it be like I said, your toaster, your car, whatever yeah. it is, do it do because it. it's usually for security related reasons. Yeah, because they found a hole. Exactly. So in this case, and this isn't really a horror story because it didn't really happen. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it happened because it potentially they could happen. got in. But you know. um, a while back, we did an episode where we talked about black hat, white hat. Um, okay, yeah. You know, I think I called it kind of like the bluefish redfish story okay <laughs> but anyway if you go back to our youtube channel and watch that me and dave talked about different kinds of hackers and one of them was a white hat yep and the white hat would just go out and do things like this to let the companies know that they have holes in their security yep. so in this case shoo thank god they found the hole because they patched it right <laughs> yes exactly so, um that, same thing with these ones right yep there's like the this is this one here says the outlet wi-fi heart monitor for babies so there and there was a heartbeat monitoring sensor for babies um that were in a sock um and same thing it's just it's one of those things where you, you think it's nice to have an app i can check on my kid whenever i want and it, and it just works uh but the problem that if you don't change it the default passwords if someone gets close to that device they can kind of hack in um, to it if they have the right little scripts on their phones and they look, look for signals and things like that and they can tunnel in and that one would probably be more harmless but it's still i mean they're still can tap into that feed of your child and see your child's heartbeat which is just a horrifying thought mm -hmm. even so yep okay so another story when my kids were little they had these little pets and this was we had dial up okay. <laughs> and so it was really hard and i can't even remember what it was called but they had these accounts that they would log in online because they had mm -hmm. to feed their pets and take care of their pets and keep them mm -hmm. alive, you know. Um, so there were some stories about those electronic pets. Nowadays, they're like, I don't know, little furry kitty that actually is connected to the internet, right? Yeah. And you could probably control it with your phone and stuff. Yep. And those were hacked. Same thing, yeah. If those were hacked, and then you know, I, there, I hear the horror stories where there's some of like the video cameras where they're saying 
messages to kids or scaring them through audio feeds and stuff like that. It can be really creepy and mm. it can traumatize your child. If, you know, if someone were to actually exploit it in a, in a negative way like that, it's pretty uncommon. You know, it's not like, um, you know, it's a very common thing that happens, but it does happen. So it's something to be aware of when you're getting smart things for your kids, just to make sure to take the extra time to change the default passwords and to make sure that it's, you're setting the account up secure without reusing the passwords elsewhere too. And I know we're going to talk about, you know, how to avoid these things, but mm -hmm. don't use the same password. Yeah. I mean, as a parent, you're like, oh, I don't want to remember all those passwords. Mm -hmm. I remember my kids had a little notebook, too, that they would keep track of all their passwords. But I'm yeah. like, if I use the same password as my email and maybe my email was the same password as my bank, you know, that's how they... And the same applies to your home now. Now you have all these different passwords for your different devices, these different accounts you're setting up online. So if someone were to get into your email password and that's the same password you set up for your Ring account, guess what? They're going to go right to your Ring account because you've got a Ring email and they're going to try that password on every account that's tied to that email. So uh, mm. you, know, you don't you want to use a separate password everywhere you can. It can be annoying, like you said, you have the little book. I like to make the joke that you know, no one has an address book anymore because you don't need to know people's phone numbers and, and, and all that because no. it's in your phone, but you need to remember all your passwords. So now you just have like a little password book, you know what I mean? Which is still, it's yeah. still dangerous because you don't want anyone to get a hold of that. We um, actually did an episode on that too, yeah. where we talked about different kinds of places to um, keep your passwords, like LastPass or um, yes, Global Form was one that I used in the past. And there's, there's lots of them, but definitely use some kind of password manager because you got to use different passwords. You got to use complicated passwords. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, smart lights and smart bulbs, can those be hacked too? Yep. Um, I think there was even like a PR demo. I think that's, yep, this one's here where there was a drone that was sending commands to smart lights and they were able to flicker them on and off. And basically you could take like, uh, if say, you know, in a skyscraper, it was all using the same lights. You could have it to where like it makes different designs on the outside of the, uh, the skyscraper and stuff with messages with the lights oh my gosh rooms on and off again so probably like in new york city where they have all those fancy signs they could probably take over those signs or whatever mm -hmm. if they're not secure yeah right yeah most likely the, the signs would be secure and things like that right? i would think less chance for them but um, i'm sure they are but you never know <laughs> um but the idea is that same thing they just it's just it's, it's using what it is is all these smart devices connect using a common protocol now called the zigbee protocol it's what they all use to kind of communicate just think of it just the language like when your thermostat is trying to talk to your phone it's using this language okay. and so what happens is the drones and these hackers can hack that particular language, now they have access to all the different devices. And that's how a lot of these attacks will happen is they'll kind of get into that protocol and using that to get into your devices. <clears throat> okay, so bottom line, every device that connects to each other, to the internet, yes, and all of that, they could all, the hackers only want to use the processing power is that what we said? For the most part, if it's using in like a botnet type thing, they're just looking okay. for all these different devices to then help them be Attack more malicious bigger. elsewhere. Exactly. Um, and a lot of the times... Or they might be trying to get to your data and your money, right? Yeah, they could be as well. Okay. It just depends uh, what, what it is. If you're a high value target where you actually own a business and things like that, you're more likely to be targeted versus someone who just does a day-to-day -day and don't, don't actually own businesses and a lot of stuff like that. A lot of times, hackers will spend their time trying to break into large databases and scraping large amounts of data and not focusing that power on one individual. And then there, there's the ones that just want to mess with you. Yeah, exactly. That's what, those are the ones that are just, they're, they're not, they're just kind of downloading programs online and seeing what they can get away with just for fun, just to, you know, just to see what they can do. And it's not really, it's still malicious, but they're mm -hmm. not doing it to purposely try to attack someone. They're just more to see what they can get away with and exploit. Um, and then you have the other crazy ones where they're just, they're, they're, breaking into children's toys and traumatizing them and that are just very malicious yeah. type activities. So it all just depends. So bottom line, if it's connected to the internet, it can be exploited in some way. So just make sure you take the extra steps to change your passwords, use two factor if you have the ability for the account. And uh, you know, if you have the ability at your house to have like a decent firewall, make sure your devices are behind your firewall versus on the outside of the firewall, just mm -hmm. open to the internet um, blind as well. Okay. I don't let's, know, that's let's, kind of a yeah, let's, verbal salad there, let's, but let's yeah, let's let's put it in uh, some kind of form that you can use. We're gonna say one, 
make sure you update everything. Yes, always right? keep your devices updated with the latest firmware that will be protecting them from the security exploits. Two, make sure you use secure passwords. Change your password, secure your password, and if available, do the two-factor where they send you the additional text message to your phone or you have to have an app to allow you into that um, portal. Don't use the same passwords over and over again. Yes, don't use the same password. <laughs> Different on everything. Yep. Um, I think that really covers it for those smaller devices, right? That's really for the main main part when you're setting anything up, whether Oh, and you said number four, put it behind a firewall. Yes, if yeah. available at your house, um, put it behind your firewall. Don't just connect it uh, straight to the internet if, yeah. you're, if you're able to do so. Most homes, if you have more than one device in your home, which most homes now do too, you're not just connecting your router straight in any way or your modem straight in. You're going to a router, which usually will have some sort of basic firewall in it. So. And speaking of firewalls, we actually require all of our business owners to have a firewall in place. That's one of our yes. minimum requirements. Yep. So if you think that you need some more security and you think maybe somebody should check out and see if there are holes in it and you're a business owner, email security, right? Yeah, security yes, at dstech.net or just get on our newsletter. You know, you can always hit reply to the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you, Tim. Oh, you're welcome. That was one, one yeah, last story one last I did thing. think of at the, that, that was kind of a unique one where you're talking about, are you going to be a targeted versus not? Usually hackers are wasting their time on high value targets because it's more worth their time. Right. There was one casino hack where actually the, oh, cas yeah. the casino was fully mm -hmm. locked down their, you know, their door access, their uh, video cameras, everything's perfectly good. Mm -hmm. The hackers couldn't do anything, but they actually found one smart thermostat that was in an aquarium monitoring the, the, the temperature of the water. And through that smart thermostat, they were able to get into the database of the casino and extract all their high rollers, personal information, social security numbers, Ooh. how much money they spent, all that. So just through the thermostat, they were able to travel the network into the database and extract their customer information. So just- Through a thermostat. Through a thermostat. Who would think, right? Yeah. I mean, you really think, cause you think, you think about the big things, like, like locking my door and yes. you know stuff like that, but a thermostat. Yep. I forgot. It's connected about that. to the we internet. Did. It's 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 the same as like you could have the best security in your house, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fence, uh, you know, guard dogs, lights, all that kind of stuff. But for some reason, you left the back window open. You know, one window open, they're still going to get in, and all the security in the world can't help you if you have an open window mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. All right. So. Subscribe to our newsletter and hit reply if you want that security assessment if you're a business owner. All right. So make it a great day. I'll see you next time.